I sat there thinking about the events of the last few weeks, and try as I might, I couldn't pinpoint anything specific on my own that would make me think she was cheating on me. The feeling that filled my being was the result of the addition of many little things that, more than anything else, made me feel uneasy. Something was happening there, but I couldn't understand what it was. I was quite sure that something was up, but I had no proof. I had no idea who, what, or where this was happening, if that was indeed the case. I even began to doubt my own sanity. Am I reading too much into what's going on? Maybe I'm overreacting? Imagining all sorts of scenarios in which she cheated, but with whom? I had no idea, but still my insides were knotted. I felt, rather than knew, that something was happening. Maybe this was the very beginning of an affair, maybe a one-time use. The more I tormented myself with thoughts and fantasies, the more confident I became in a strange way. I had been thinking like this for what seemed like weeks, but how long did it go on before I became even slightly aware that something was wrong? I took another sip of my JD. The ice clinked in the glass, telling me it was time to pour more. I caught the bartender's eye, and he nodded. He slid along the counter and replaced my glass with another double JD on ice. He smiled slightly at me, as if reading my thoughts. He had seen that look many times before. His gaze was supportive and at the same time compassionate, as he recognized the pained look in my eyes. JD's sweet taste warmed my mouth and throat as I took another sip. I should calm down, I decided, looking around the bar and noticing a handful of other people drinking. It was quiet. The low hum of chatter simply filled the room with unintelligible words and added background to my personal growing sense of unhappiness. There was no joy here. The faces of the customers who filled the bar were expressionless. No one stood out. Everyone was plain and average in every way. The only woman in the place, who looked to be in her forties, a little overdressed for the time of day and place, and who looked perhaps a little desperate, was being treated to drinks by an older guy. He looked like he was hoping for luck, and looking at her, he didn't have to try so hard. I thought she already had his number. The other souls seemed to be simply passing the time, while the rain fell outside and further dampened the mood, and soon each of them would run out of reasons to stay in the sanctity of the bar and head home. I still haven't decided what I'm going to do. So, what's the story? I turned in the direction of the voice. She looked at me and her eyes penetrated deep into my soul. I thought I opened my mouth to speak, but no words came out. She stood in the dimly lit bar, dripping with water, as she began to take off her coat. What are you doing here, Sammy? I was worried about you, and I had an idea that I would find you here. So here I am. Do you want to talk? I looked at her, and my mind tried to regain some balance as I looked at her. Are you worried about me? Why? What do you mean? I looked at her, trying to understand what she was thinking, worrying if she was trying to trick me somehow. Can I trust her? I took a sip from my JD and ordered her a vodka and coke, which the bartender served with some style, smiling at the sight of Sammy. She caught his eye as he serviced her, smiling one of his sweet butter-won't-melt smiles as his gaze slid over her full breasts, jutting out beneath her tight blouse. Sammy waited until the bartender walked away before saying anything else. Her eyes were wary as we looked at each other uncertainty, fighting for position and advantage. Well, it all has to do with how you've been acting lately. You look like you have the world's worries on your shoulders. Don't you just want to tell me what the hell is going on? I looked into her brown eyes for a moment before looking away. She always knew how to read me like an open book. That was what I always liked about her. We got along. We also seemed to somehow understand each other. We had arguments, but we never fought about anything. We've always been direct and honest with each other. Well, up to a point. What was left unsaid was simply understood. Sammy, I'm fine and we're fine. You don't really have anything to worry about. I looked at her as she took in my words. I could see she didn't buy it. My heart sank and I tried to brush it off, but I could see it wouldn't go away. Sammy took a slow sip from her glass and looked straight into my soul again. Oh my God, this is it, I thought. She placed the glass on the table in front of her, then clasped her fingers together and leaned forward slightly towards me. I know. 
What? I know what's going on. I don't understand what you mean. I tried to bluff. For God's sake, Steve, I know. So let's be honest with each other and stop fooling around. The bartender caught the last few words, and his head turned just enough to try to catch more of what he assumed must have been something juicy. Let's sit in one of the booths. It's too public, in my opinion. I saw the disappointed look on the bartender's face as we stood up and walked across the bar to one of the side booths. We sat opposite each other like prize fighters waiting for the other to strike. Okay, so what do you think you know? I fought in the tournament. Nice try, Steve. You know you can't lie to me. We've known each other too long and I do, so tell me about it. You know you need to talk to someone, so put it out there. I've known Sammy since I was 17. She was always there and had a bit of a crush on me for a time when I started dating her sister Claire. Claire was three years older and we started dating when we were both 20. Sammy and I always got along, much to the displeasure of her older sister. They were as different as chalk and cheese in many ways, but their personalities were common, as evidenced by the many quarrels between the sisters over the years. Two years later, we were married and had what I thought was an idyllic future. We both worked decent jobs and earned enough to at least make life comfortable. My sister-in-law Sammy had fun in her late teens and early twenties, and now, at age twenty-five, was looking for something more grown up. I felt like she had sown all her wild oats and turned into someone that I thought any guy would be lucky to get close to. Claire and I have been married for five years, well, we'll be five in a month when our anniversary arrives. That's if we go that far, I thought. Sammy is a very attractive woman and someone I considered a friend as well as my sister-in-law. I looked at her, and my eyes began to fill with tears as I searched for words to explain how I felt, but still, her words, I know, rang loud and clear in my head. She reached across the table, and her fingers stroked mine before squeezing them tightly, a sign of support, and even more as I felt my heart slowly breaking. Okay, Steve, if you don't tell me, then I will. She's cheating on you. I think you know this. Of course I know. What are you going to do about it now? My eyes widened when I heard those words, but still refused to understand as I stubbornly tried to make sense of what I knew and what it meant. I didn't want to hear anything anymore. In my opinion, if I didn't really know, then it couldn't have happened and then it couldn't have hurt me. I wouldn't have to deal with it either. Sammy looked at me. She saw the glassy look I gave her. Was it shock or denial? Steve, I love you dearly. But for God's sake, wake up. I'm sure it's some kind of misunderstanding or something. I tried to slip it under my arm and also tried to mislead myself even more. Sammy's eyes suddenly flashed with rage. She reached out and hit me in the face, damn hard. The bartender looked at me and stopped wiping the glass he was holding in his hand. Is everything all right there? I raised my hand. Yes, of course. There are no problems here. I raised my hand to my cheek. The heat of the slap made it glow, and I was sure Sammy's perfect handprint was there too. Sorry, Steve, but you drive me crazy sometimes. You know how much I care about you, and I can't stand to see you hurt like this, so be wise and courageous. This is happening, and we need to do something about it. I swallowed, rubbing my cheek, and the gravity of my situation began to dawn on me as the pain of her slap shot through my brain. Okay, I'll start. I'm sure you at least suspect something, but I'll continue anyway. A few weeks ago, I was with her when she got a call on her cell phone. She left the room to answer, which was a strange thing to do, wasn't it? We're sisters, damn it. What could she be hiding from me? I nodded, fearing the worst, but as I sipped my JD, she continued. I just thought it was weird, so when I had the chance, I checked her phone. She's so trusting. There is no lock code on it. The call was from a guy who was in her contact and introduced himself as Robert. I didn't know about any Robert or Bob, but thought I'd keep an eye out for any recurrence. So who was this guy, Robert or Bob? I asked, trying to rack my brain for any information about this name. I actually found out who he was about a week later. This is a guy she knew years ago, before she even started dating you. Anyway, it looks like he contacted us through one of those social networks or a chat site or something like that. It looks like they've been messaging each other for a few weeks now, too. But I didn't know anything about it. All I knew 
was that there seemed to be little things going on that somehow stayed apart. Yes, I know, but it was all part of what they did. Nothing obvious, but it just seemed like everything was falling into place for them. So it's just a couple of friends texting each other. Reliving old times or something? Yes, it seems. Anyway, that's how it all started. Are you saying that something happened? Yes. Are you saying that you didn't notice anything suspicious? Only that it seemed like circumstances were conspiring to keep us apart, and of course the obvious lack of opportunity to have fun. Sammy looked at me with a look of disbelief on her face as if I was stupid. What? I stared back at her. Steve, I love you dearly. But damn it, get your head out of your ass. Reality sank deeper into my drugged brain as her words became more real by the minute. Damn, I thought this was serious. I took another sip and gathered my courage. How far do you think it went? Or do you know? Sammy looked at me. Her eyes sparkled and looked away for a split second. That was all the answer I needed. When? How? Where? I asked quickly. My mind was now playing catch-up as I felt rage begin to boil inside me. The race between logic, common sense, and pure animal rage has begun. I know she's met him at least three times in the last two weeks. At first, I was not sure, and only two days ago I found out for sure that it had progressed. I was having lunch with one of my friends, who works with Claire, and she let it slip. I didn't show it at the time, and she hid it well, so I let it slide. It turns out she met him twice for lunch and at least once for dinner one evening last week. Is this consistent with what you noticed? I looked at her, taking in her words. There have been a couple of times recently where I called her office to set up a lunch meeting and she wasn't there or she just left. Was this when she met him? Then last week she had a seminar that she simply had to attend. It was announced late and scheduled for after work. That evening she returned home late after 12 o'clock. Reminiscing about the past, she came and said it had taken a long time and the team went for a drink at the hotel bar to relax before leaving. I also remember that there was no sex that night and she also took a shower before bed. My mind was racing. My brain was confused as I perceived these hurtful facts, each of which increased the agony and turned the knife that was firmly stuck in my heart. To hell with all this, I suddenly spat. Sammy looked at me, and now there was concern in her eyes. Steve, what are you going to do? Don't do anything stupid. She shouldn't get you into trouble with the law. I looked at her, and from the expression on her face, I knew that she had noticed the change. My face seemed like stone, and my heart was now a block of granite. My body was preparing for what was to come, and she could see it. To hell with all this. I will not put up with this under any circumstances. This will stop. I'll stop this. There is no place in my life for a cheater. She will pay. He will pay, too. My eyes glazed over as rage bubbled up inside me. My muscles tensed and my fists clenched. I've never been a violent guy. I had my share of confrontations when I was younger, but I never looked for trouble. Sometimes you just have to take a step forward and face the truth, which is what I did then. I was just a little out of practice, that's all. But it had to be fixed. And quickly. Steve, whatever you're up to, take a step back. Think about it, and don't rush without a plan. Otherwise, everything will go to hell. You need to think and prepare. Otherwise, you will end up getting burned. Her words saturated my rage, seeped into the rational part of my brain and made sense. In a weird way, it helped me calm down a little and realize that what I suspected was actually true. So at least I wasn't going crazy. Do you think she's there now? I looked at Sammy. I saw that her eyes filled with tears, and the tear began its lonely path down her pretty face. Yes, I know that she is with him now. That's why I came looking for you. I felt rage boiling inside me again and slammed my fist on the table. Several people in the bar turned and looked. I raised my hand to the bartender, and he gave me that half-smile again. How the hell did he know? Do you know where exactly? I asked, more hopefully than anything else. No, 
I have no idea, but tomorrow I'll see my friend again and find out what I can. I know he's married and has a couple of kids, although I'm not sure where he lives yet. But I'll do my best to find out if it helps. I reached for her hand, holding it tightly, and brushed a tear from her cheek. Thank you, Sammy. I know it's hard for you, but I really appreciate it. I really do. What are you going to do? She looked at me worriedly. I know I can't do what I want, at least not yet, but I'll stop it. When I do this, it will be final, and there will be no retribution, no remorse, but they will both pay. In the meantime, I will keep what is mine. I will get the evidence I need for what I decide to do next. Sammy looked at me worriedly as I finished my JD. I caught the bartender's eye, and he poured another one for each of us. As he approached, I saw that Sammy wanted to say something. I raised my hand to stop her until the drinks arrived. I handed him a banknote. Keep the change for yourself. He nodded and left. So how long will it be before you come face to face with her? I have a lot to think about. I'll make a couple of calls tomorrow while I do what I need to do with my assets. She won't get a penny from me if I can catch her. Not a single penny. You know it will be difficult for you to be around her, don't you? Yes, I understand that, but in any case, in a sense, this has been the case for the last few weeks. I'm guessing that if she hasn't noticed it now, she won't see any change. Sammy finished her drink in one gulp and stood up. I have to go, Steve. Can we talk again tomorrow? I'll find out everything I can for you. She put her coat back on. I stood up and helped her, feeling her press against me. Crap. She looked so much like her sister. She looked up at me and I saw tears in her eyes as I kissed her cheek. Go home. I'll be okay. I'll call you tomorrow. She smiled and turned away, and I watched her walk out the door into the dark and damp evening. I took a deep breath and sat down, wondering what to do now. One thing was certain. They will pay, and it will be fast, ruthless, and unforgiving. I don't remember much after that. Somehow I woke up in my own bed with a mouth like the bottom of a parrot's cage. My head was still spinning when I lifted her from the bed. I rolled over and noticed that I was alone and Claire was nowhere to be seen. My senses were slowly awakening when I heard a noise downstairs. I swung my legs off the bed and tried to get up. Oh my God, what did I do to myself last night, I thought. I staggered to the bathroom and began to recover from the effects of my JD cloud. I went downstairs in a haze of pain and my joints ached. Everything seemed to hurt. Looking into the kitchen, I saw her. Hello, my love. What did you do last night to get into this state? Would you like to know, bitch? I had a drink with an old friend, that's all. Got carried away. I sat down, poured myself some orange juice, swallowed it, and went for another. Oh, really? Who was that? Anyone I know? My mind turned on. No, I do not think so. It was Bob. I knew him a long time ago. Haven't seen him in years, and he was in town for a couple of days on business. Bob? Something flashed across her face when she turned around. Yeah, I'm sure you probably remember me mentioning that. We went to college together and played football for a couple of years. Tall guy, dark hair, he still asked about you. Claire looked puzzled. Sorry, I don't remember any Bob. But still, the main thing is that you have fun. Strike first. She sat opposite me at the table. I looked at her, remembering my conversation with Sammy yesterday. So, honey, what did you do last night? Was there anything exciting? What time did you arrive? She looked me in the eye as she lied to me. Oh, nothing special, really. I finished my work and then the two of us went out for something to eat and drink. I was home by 9.30. I started to worry about you, but then I remembered that you had a late meeting. I knew she wasn't home by then because I was still home at 10 p.m., that's when I got enough and went to the bar. Second strike. I have some things I need to do this morning, so I'll take a shower and hit the road. I may be late tonight, so don't wait. Bob said he'll be in touch. We still have some catching up to do. You'll have to invite him over if he stays here for a few days. It's nice to meet old friends. I'm sure I will do it. You must remember him fondly. 
She looked at me blankly. Her face tried not to react in any way and not give anything away, but she felt something. I saw it. Maybe it will come back to me later, love. Now move, otherwise you will be late. Do you want me to drive? You actually drank a little too much last night. No, everything is okay. I still need to get a taxi and pick up my car, as I remember leaving it at the bar, so thanks anyway. I went to get dressed after drinking more orange juice and a couple of painkillers. I left the house 30 minutes later while Claire was getting ready. I had a busy day ahead of me. I was sure of one thing, this would not last long. I gritted my teeth when I thought about Claire with this Bob character. My fists clenched. He was going to pay, and I was going to crush the bastard. The work was chaotic. I had call after call to sort out problems on the line. My secretary hosted some, but there were meetings I needed to attend, so I couldn't avoid any of them. By mid-morning, the initial rush had subsided, and I had some almost free time to sort out my personal problems. I closed my office door and started checking my finances. Within 15 minutes, I had tightened the strings of my wallet and moved some cash out of reach. I also made an appointment with a lawyer to discuss a possible divorce. I still had a few days left before that, so I thought this would give me time to get more information. Not that it would matter that much anyway, but it might give me some leverage. Claire had her own bank account and credit card, so nothing needed to be done there. The problem was access to our joint account, but I quickly closed that loophole so that if it came down to it, she wouldn't be able to get more than what was left. My own account was secured and only had a small balance in it. The rest was withdrawn and safe. We didn't have children, so it would have essentially been a straight break if it had come down to it. I decided to myself that the only way we could get past this was if Claire confessed her sins, so to speak, and asked for forgiveness. Show any restraint, and everything will be over between us. This thought made me sad. I sat silently at my desk, thinking about what happened and the actions I took today. Did I need more information about Bob's character and the evidence? Or would the fact that I knew about it be enough to really get them both? The phone rang, disturbing my thoughts. Yes. It's me, Sammy. How are you, Steve? Oh, you know, I'm busy with things, thoughts, plans, all this and much more. Mostly I don't understand why, but I started to make progress. I learned more about this guy from my friend. His name is Bob Stones and he is married. I also have his address and where he works. I was able to get this without reporting what was happening. My friend knows Claire and recently saw her with him. From what she says, they are getting really hot with each other. No matter how hard they try to hide it, the signs are there, she says. Has she seen them together? I asked. Yes. They were at the Ramada the other evening after the seminar. They stayed after everyone else had left. She said they were comfortable with each other. Well... At least this is a start. I'm sure there are CCTV cameras there if needed. Anyway, give me his details. I need to figure this out. It's eating me up inside and I don't know how long I can hold it in. Sammy handed over her details and within minutes I found his social media page and received his photo. It was then that I thought I remembered his face. It was familiar, but where and when had I seen this face before? I looked at my watch. It was almost lunchtime, and I decided to call Claire to maybe meet up or just to stir the pot a little. My heart went cold when I called. The knot in my stomach felt like it was about to burst when I heard her answer. Hi, darling. She cooed, recognizing my number. Hey, baby, what are you doing for lunch? I was wondering if we could meet if you're free. Oh, sorry, dear. I have an appointment in 30 minutes that will last until the end of the day. I was going to grab something quick at the grocery store next door. Everything is fine. What is this meeting about? Anything exciting? Same old routine with a new client. That's all. I think it's Mr. Stones. Her words pierced me like a knife. Bitch! She almost shoved it in my face, telling me who it was. I held my breath for a few seconds, trying to control myself. Cute? Are you here? Her voice sounded in the earphone. Yes, I'm here, you fucking bitch. Strike three. You and Mr. Fucking Stones will get yours very soon. No fucking reprieve and no mercy. Complete scorched earth. Uh, yes, darling, I'm here. Sorry, I got distracted by something I was just thinking about. 
Look, I have to go, and I know you have to get ready for your meeting, too, so have fun, and I'll see you later. Okay, bye. Love you. Bye. I hung up. I was seething with anger and sat gritting my teeth when my secretary poked her head through the door. Steve, I'm going to that grocery store down the street. Do you want me to buy you something? I thought for a moment. Yes, buy me anything. Surprise me. The main thing is that it is large, filling and with a lot of red meat inside. I feel like I want to sink my teeth into something. She looked at me strangely and nodded. As she closed the door, it seemed to her that her boss was acting a little strange. He had been locked up all morning, businesslike, yes, but there was something else. Something was brewing. She just knew it. Sammy called her sister's office and walked into the lobby to see her sister exit the elevator and walk toward the front door next to a tall, dark-haired man. He looked to be about 30, that is, a couple of years older. She recognized him after seeing his photo on the internet. Bob Stones. She stood in front of her sister, who jumped in surprise when she saw her. Sammy, what are you doing here? Sammy looked at her sister, seeing her discomfort at having her obvious plans ruined. I just thought I'd pop over to see my sister and maybe go have lunch. She smiled innocently. Well, Mr. Stones and I are having a business lunch, so maybe another time. He extended his hand to her. Bob Stones, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Mr. Stones. How long have you known Claire? He looked a little confused by her question. Claire started to pull her away. Listen, Sammy, we need to go. We have a meeting. See you soon. Sammy smiled as she watched the couple walk out the door and into a waiting taxi. She noticed her sister looking back at her as it drove away. I sat in my office chewing a huge piece of pie. It was stuffed with red meat, and I smiled to myself as I slowly bit into it, savoring it and thinking about my next steps. Sammy confirmed that Claire had left her office, so I called her secretary and found out that she would be gone all day. Well, isn't this damn great? As far as my finances are concerned, everything was settled. I had a locksmith on speed dial and agreed ahead of time on what was required. My lawyer was on edge and ready to act as soon as I gave him the rest of the information he requested. Okay, tonight was supposed to be the first step. I was going to really mess around with this couple for a while before I pulled the trigger. My old man always told me, don't let them know that you are following them. Just take route number one, be straightforward and destroy the bastards to hell. A person who has few, to say the least, direct words. Maybe it was something I had forgotten about recently, but it was getting damn close. It was on its way. That evening I was at home. When Claire walked through the door, she looked beautiful. Nothing unusual, she smelled normal too, until I went up to kiss her. It was the unmistakable smell of men's cologne, faint but still noticeable. She noticed that I was looking at her. I didn't say anything, kissed her lightly on the cheek and headed for the door. Where are you going? Are you okay? I am fine. I have a problem that I need to deal with, that's all. Just going to see Jerry, he invited me to play poker with a couple of guys from work. I thought it would do me good. It won't be too late. With that, I closed the door behind me and, gritting my teeth, got into my car and slid down the driveway. I drove to Jerry's, pulled up in front of his house, and he led me through the door into his garage. Jerry and I have a long-standing relationship. He always sailed with the wind and had gotten into trouble with the police in the past. But given his special combat training, he was the perfect friend for what I had in mind. You don't mess with a cage fighter. Jerry was a big guy, a little over six feet tall and weighing about 198 pounds. All muscle, not the kind of guy to mess with, trust me. With a personality to match his size, he was formidable but we had been firm friends since school. I called Jerry earlier, and he offered to help in any way. No questions asked, no matter what. I needed this kind of support. We quickly slipped into the garage, and I changed into dark overalls and a matching ski mask. We were like two mime performers standing and looking at each other. Not a word was spoken as we climbed into the nondescript used car he had procured. There was nothing remarkable about her, 
As we walked slowly across town to the address Sammy had given me, we still didn't say a word. We agreed on the format in advance, so there was no need to say anything more. Jerry stopped the car near Bob Stone's house. There were no signs of life there and the only light that we could see was on. We waited in silence when the front door opened. We saw him get out, get into his car and drive down the road. Jerry followed at a safe distance and we already knew where he was going so there was no rush or panic. There were no problems with parking at the training field. We stayed in the car while Bob Stones went to get his usual 50-ball bucket. Apparently, he did this every week. It's amazing what you can learn on the internet if you know where to look. We made ourselves comfortable. The radio was on and Kenny Rogers was humming softly. Jerry looked at me as words poured out of the radio. He reached out and turned it off. We sat, watching and waiting. The tension inside me was almost unbearable. It was hard to stay still and not go out and beat around the bush, but it was risky. The parking lot began to empty until there were only a couple of other cars left. We both tensed up when we saw him heading towards his car. Jerry got out of the car and stealthily walked towards the target. Bob Stones was still getting over the last shot of his practice when he lifted the lid of his trunk and put his clubs inside. Jerry picked it up and stuffed it into the trunk along with the clubs. One well-aimed blow to the jaw was enough to silence him. Cage fighter Jerry gained the upper hand, and for the next 30 seconds Bob Stones was in severe pain in the trunk of his own car. Satisfied that he had used the human punching bag enough, Jerry turned his attention to Mr. Stone's groin, and soon several blows from Jerry's fist caused him to yelp before he passed out. He slammed the lid and quickly returned to the car, where I quietly, without fuss, drove us out of the parking lot. Everything went very well, Jerry thought, taking off his gloves and mask. Thank you, Jerry. I really appreciate it. Don't worry, buddy. Any time. I am still your debtor and I will never be able to repay you for what you have done for me. Well, that's what friends are for. At least your hands weren't broken and there were no CCTV cameras in the parking lot, so it was a good job, as they say. Let's go back and start this card game. The rest will already be there. We drove back and played poker for the next four hours, just for fun, without high stakes. We were friends, and friends don't steal from each other. The atmosphere was good. All the guys knew what was going on and supported me the whole way. This alone made me feel good about what I knew I would also have to do to Clara very soon. But first I was going to mess with her heed. I stumbled through the door just after 1 a.m. I exaggerated the amount I drank and... Jerry asked one of the guys to deliver my car. Claire stayed awake and waited. I thought it was time for an Oscar-winning performance. Darling, why are you not sleeping? I told you I'd be a little late. Are you okay? She looked at me intently. Jerry and the guys just dropped me off in my car, scared that I hit JD a little hard again. I threw my jacket onto the coat rack and missed miserably. I plopped down on the sofa and looked at her. Claire sat with her arms crossed over her chest, a look of disgust on her face. I stared at her with bulging eyes and a blank expression on my face. What? She just snorted. She was bursting with the desire to say something. Come on, bitch, post it. What's going on, Steve? Is there someone else or something else? You've been acting really strange lately. I laughed. I felt anger boiling inside me, but I swallowed it back. All in good time, Steve. Take your cold pill. I'm fine, my pedal. I've been having a hard time lately, that's all. It will all be over soon. Claire looked at me. My words were replaying in her head. I have seen that. She wasn't sure, but there was definitely something there. We went to bed. I pretended to pass out and apparently fell asleep almost immediately. This made her angry and she was ready to do anything, but I didn't play. The next morning, Claire was up first and made coffee and I came crashing down the stairs acting disgustingly like I had a hangover. I ran into the kitchen. Good morning, my love. How are you? My God, I have a good head on my shoulders again. Is there anything I can take for this? She threw some headache medicine at me while I sipped my coffee. She seemed calm. I saw her phone on the kitchen table and wondered if someone had called her. Claire saw me looking at her phone and I could tell she wanted to reach for it, but... That would have seemed weird. 
I poured some more orange juice and, casually picking up the phone, saw a look of panic flash across her face. So she somehow got the message. I just glanced at it quickly before pushing it towards her. Needs recharging, my love. I don't want any messages not to be received due to a low battery. I left the kitchen and went to get dressed. Claire looked out for me as if she knew something was going on, and Bob didn't text her this morning like he had been doing for the last couple of weeks. He couldn't know, could he? She dismissed the thought. She couldn't have been so careless, and it only lasted a few weeks. There were several lunches, dinner three teams, and, of course, a hotel, which was also three times. In fact, she thought it was nothing special, just harmless fun and Steve would never find out. He wasn't going to leave without her, was he? This suddenly made her think, when was the last time she had sex with her husband? Oh my God, she couldn't remember. Maybe that's how it was. She needed to do something about it, and quickly. She was so engrossed in Bob that she missed what was in front of her, the only sure thing that could make Steve suspicious. I tumbled down the stairs and almost flew out the door when Claire tried in vain to grab me for a deeper kiss than usual. I waved and smiled at her as I pulled out of the driveway and headed to work. Around 11 a.m. I thought I'd text Claire just for fun. Sorry about today, my love. I have a lot of thoughts, but everything will be resolved soon. Love you, ex. I sat back in my chair, waiting for something to happen. Just after lunch, Sammy called to see me. Steve, what the hell happened? What are you asking, Sammy? Bob Stones was found beaten in the trunk of his car by a golf club employee earlier today. Claire told me about this. She is shocked by this. She's really shocked. I told her that these things happen sometimes these days, and it's terrible when it's someone we know, but we shouldn't make too much of it. You did it, didn't you? Oh my God, was he badly hurt? In any case, I can't say that it's too expensive for me, but no, I didn't lay a finger on it. Well, he's just a little beat up. I heard there were a few cuts and bruises, but nothing seemed broken. Did you ask how she found out? Yes. She said that she had an appointment with him for today, and his company called, saying that he was in the hospital. His wife called them. This is very sweet. Also believable, but cute. Maybe next time it won't be so easy for all of them. What do you mean, Steve? Accidents happen in the strangest places. That night when I returned home, Claire was not at home. Her car was gone and there was no message. I called her phone. Where are you, my love? I asked cheerfully. Oh, I'm in the hospital, visiting a friend. I'll be back soon. I'm on my way right now. Okay, I hope she's getting better. Anyway, see you soon, love. Love you. Bye. I turned off the phone before she could answer. Thirty minutes later, she returned home. Her face looked gray and haggard. How's your friend doing? I hope it's not too serious and she gets out of there soon. Claire looked at me as if she wanted to say something, but changed her mind. Oh yeah, there's nothing too dramatic about it. She just fell and got some nasty bruises. We'll be home in a few days. This is good. Coffee? Yes. Thank you. Claire looked at me as she sipped her coffee. The other night, one of the representatives of my company was attacked. She left the statement hanging, waiting for a reaction. Oh God, really? What's happened? He was beaten and left overnight in his car. Oh God, this is terrible. I hope the police catch whoever did this. Is he okay? Yes, fortunately, Bob wasn't hurt too badly. It just seems like they wanted to beat him up for no reason. Nothing was stolen. Strike four. This is the same Bob you said you didn't know. Bitch. She saw me looking at her and realized she had made a mistake. She hid it, but she knew it was too late. Now she also knew that I knew, too. She hurriedly headed towards the exit to change clothes. I suspected she might answer the phone any second, but who... I decided I needed to rethink my plan since things were moving faster now. I needed to get things moving a little. I called out to Claire, who was coming up the stairs, and told her that I needed to go out for a while so she wouldn't worry, and that I wouldn't be long. I drove to Bob Stone's home address and knocked on the door. The door opened, and a petite, dark-haired woman stood in front of me. Mrs. Stone's, you don't know me, but I have to tell you something that is quite delicate in nature. 
Can I come in for a minute? She looked at me nervously, but at the same time intrigued and wary. My name is Steve Ryland. My wife's name is Claire Ryland, and she has an affair with your husband. I stopped there when an expression appeared on her face that was both awareness and horror. She moved away from the door and led me inside to the living room. I take it this has something to do with both of them? I could already see the pain growing in her eyes. Yes, I'm afraid that is so. They were having an affair, and I found out about it a few days ago. I'm sorry to have to tell you about this. I also know that he is currently in the hospital. She seemed to shrink internally, and her head dropped to her chest as tears flowed easily for several seconds. I knew it. I knew he was at it again, she spat. I'm going to divorce Claire. She's had enough chances to confess everything and I can't stand her lies anymore. I'm not too sure how long this went on, but it's enough for me that she betrayed me and that I can't forgive or forget. Does this have anything to do with the beating he suffered last night? I looked into her pleading eyes and quickly decided on my actions. I don't know about that. I didn't even lay a finger on him. For me, it happened so quickly that I myself am still in shock. Whoever did this is fine with me. Sorry, but that's exactly how I feel. Could he also be flirting with someone else's wife? Nothing surprises me. Well, he can keep his sorry ass on the other side of my front door. I've had enough of this. That's why we came back here, because he cheated. I left her still spitting fire after I gave her the number of my locksmith and my lawyer too. Honey, oh my God, what a mess. I jumped into my car and headed to the hospital, which was only 10 minutes away. I got there faster. I walked through the lobby, almost smiling, as if a layer of stress had begun to lift off me. I squeezed into the elevator and went up to the room on the fourth floor, where a certain Mr. Bob Stones was. I checked the patient lost and found him in a side room. I slipped past the nurse's station unnoticed, entered his room, and carefully closed the door behind me. When I entered, he looked at me questioningly. I walked over to his bed, looking at his bandaged face. One eye is closed, the other is bloodshot, and he looks at me, trying to focus. Jerry did a really good job, I thought, as I looked him over. You look like you don't recognize me, Bob. Think a little. I'll give you time. I smiled at him when he looked at me comically. I sat on the edge of his bed as he looked at me through the bandages on his face. I could only see one very black and swollen eye, and it looked like he had problems with his jaw, too. Doesn't matter. I looked at the raised bedding supporting the weight of his lower body. Oh my God, this looks disgusting. It hurts, doesn't it? When I took the emergency button from him, throwing it under the bed, I poked him in the ribs and he squealed like a little pig. So, you still thought about who I could be, Bob? Do you want a hint? Still the same confused look on half of his face in bed. Let me think. Oh yes, this might help. How about you think about all the married women you've had sex with and how many marriages you've ruined? Is this a good enough starting point? His eyes looked at me, and I could tell his mind was buzzing as he tried to put the pieces of the puzzle together. Another minute passed as I waited, wanting to savor his pain and confusion. Another hint? Little Bobby? Try this. I'm married to a woman named Claire. Will it work? I saw the light bulb go off when he realized who I was. Like this. You understand everything, right? I smiled like a tiger before dinner. He nodded slowly. I'm glad we've got this sorted out now. I bet you're wondering why I'm here, aren't you? Yes, of course it is. Well, I came to deliver a message from your wife. I paused and waited for him to understand. And then I made a sound in my throat. It seemed like his throat was injured so he couldn't speak very clearly at all, no matter. She told me to send you. It's clear enough for you. Fuck off. Do not come back. The divorce will be sent by mail. Oh, and by the way, screw you. I saw a tear flow from the only eye I could see. I started laughing. He couldn't move, and I laughed some more. Watching him struggle, I leaned over him and looked into his one eye. I'm divorcing my wife because she had fun with a scumbag like you, and this is just the beginning for you, my friend. We will meet many more times. Of that you can be sure. I will ruin your life like you ruin mine. I'll never stop, so start running. Oh, and by the way, I didn't do this to you, just so you know. 
I wanted him to wonder who it was. I raised my fist as he watched and slammed it hard into his one open eye. I felt something crunch, no big deal, and then another quick blow to my balls. He screamed and then lost consciousness. I got up and left the room. Satisfied? Not in the slightest, but it was a start. He could lie there, knowing he screwed up and not being able to do anything about it. No one saw me leave, and if they had, they would have seen the big smile on my face. I drove home slowly to deal with the other half of my problem. My inner anger was under control because once the retaliation began, it was simply a course of action that would run its course, which I will follow and enjoy for the most part. I was sad at the end of my marriage, but as much as I hurt at that moment, I knew there was never going back after her betrayal. My only consolation was that the parties who hurt me would feel it to a much greater extent. I do not forgive. There was a note on Bob Stones's card that we would meet again. I parked my car in the driveway of the house. Claire's car was parked where she had left it no more than two hours ago, and I absentmindedly tapped the hood as I passed her on the way to my front door. I put my key in the lock and thought this might be the last time I do this as a married man. My heart suddenly felt like lead when I walked inside. It was as if all the worries of the last few days suddenly became real and incredibly heavy on my shoulders as I slowly walked towards the living room. As I approached the door, I heard the TV murmur in the corner of the room. I stood motionless, staring at her. Claire sat perched on the sofa. Her behavior was filled with fear and trepidation, as if she was waiting for the axe to fall. She had a feeling that something was wrong, as if the game was over, but nothing had been said yet. She was trembling with excitement, trying to remain calm, and I stood and watched her. She raised her head and I saw fear in her eyes. Her mouth tried to say something, but nothing came out. I walked into the room and then walked past her, getting myself a drink. I placed my glass with a large amount of JD with ice on the coffee table between us and sat down. My eyes looked at her, absorbing her fear, and perhaps I sensed a bit of defiance too. I said nothing as I reached for my drink and took a slow sip. The drink warmed the back of my throat as it slid down, my eyes boring into her without blinking. She waited. Let this bitch wait, I thought, taking another sip, still silent. My face was expressionless as I watched the woman I loved so dearly stare back at me. My heart was still filled with deep feelings for her, but was now balanced by the pain she had caused me for no good reason. Now she would begin to feel my pain, too. I stared at her, but she saw nothing in my face that would give her any reason for optimism. So much has already been said between us without any words at all. Claire seemed to pull herself together and straighten up as she apparently decided to be bold. She had no idea what I knew and could no longer bear the accusing silence. Where did you go? Her eyes betrayed her concern while I sat motionless and silent. Talk to me, damn it, she stammered. I took another slow sip of my J.D. I really love J.D. after a busy day, I thought as I watched her get more and more stressed. What's wrong with you, Steve? She hissed, angry at my silent treatment of her. Okay, Claire, I'll tell you where I went if you also tell me where you were, okay? She looked at me hesitantly and warily as her mind began to race, like two prize fighters weighing each other, not sure who would make the first move, fearful of a counterpunch. I told you I was in the hospital and visiting a friend. What does all of this mean? She leaned back in her chair, crossing her arms, pleased with her first throw. I took another slow puff of my JD. Honey, I just knew you would say this. Do you want to try again? She watched my calm speech, and I saw fear flash in her eyes. Now she was scared. I was with my friend, as I already said. What is wrong with you? And again, she thought she had brushed off the question and turned it back to me. Okay, Claire, enough of this nonsense. I'll tell you where I went, okay? It will be easier for you to understand what we are getting at. I myself was visiting a friend. I didn't know her very long, but what I had to tell her was really very important. I haven't even met her before, but I can say that we are kind of friends now. I watched her face carefully. I could tell she was trying to control herself, 
but when she stuck her chin out, her defiant look gave her away. Did I have an enlightening conversation with her about her husband, Bob Stones? Perhaps you've heard of him. I saw the curtain begin to slide. It looks like her husband had an accident and ended up in the hospital. Nothing serious, just some pretty nasty bruises so he'll live. So that's good, right? Claire's face flushed as she felt the net closing in around her as I played with her. What? What did you want to talk to that Stones woman about? Claire asked, knowing the answer but afraid to hear it from my lips. It looks like her husband is a serial philanderer, skirt chaser, traitor, or whatever you call it. Either way, I found out he cheated and felt she had a right to know. Oh my God! She gasped, feeling something tighten around her throat like a noose. Are you okay, honey? Can I get you something to drink? Do you know anything about Bob Stones' affairs, my love? I sipped my drink while she tried to find the words. Her mouth wouldn't listen and nothing came out. Let me help you here. I looked intently into her eyes, wanting her to see my deepest feelings now. I know. Her eyes widened and her hand went to her mouth as the realization hit her hard. I watched her face as she looked back at me. Shock. Disbelief. All this and much more when she was looking for at least some support, but saw nothing on my face. I know about you and Bobby, baby. I knew this for a while, not long, but long enough. So if you have something to say, I suggest you do it now before you go. I emptied my glass and stood up to pour another. Are you sure you don't want a drink? I asked much calmer than I actually felt, given the circumstances. She nodded. I poured us both a large drink and sat back in the chair opposite her. Claire took a long sip and then looked at me. It didn't mean anything. You know, it was just sex. It was just sex. Of course it was. It didn't mean anything at all, did it? Are we forgetting the vows we both made? I felt anger boil inside me when she mentioned the traitor cliché. But it was just sex, Steve. It just happened. Are you serious now? It never happens just like that. Usually two people decide to have sex. They plan and agree to take off their clothes. They plan the place, the time. Don't treat me like a fool. You and Bobby have already cuckolded me for a few weeks or maybe months, but no more. Go to hell, both of you. It only happened twice, and that wasn't that great either. Yes, the thought of it was exciting, but it wasn't fun to do because I was constantly worried that you might find out. Well, bitch, I finally found out. So I hope it was worth our marriage. Steve, I'm sorry. Really sorry. It didn't mean anything and we can get through this. I will make amends to you and do whatever you say. I heard myself laugh, also loud and maniacal, as she stared at me, and she was struck by the thought that had just flashed through her head that this could be serious. It was a mistake. We can fix this. I'm sorry. Yes, sure. You are my love. I'm sorry you were caught. Would you have stopped if you hadn't been caught? I think not. All the old cliches fall so easily from the lips of a cheater, just like all the lies you've told me and others since this started. It becomes second nature to you. The only person who will swallow your lies here is yourself. Honestly? You are not the woman I fell in love with and married. I don't recognize you now. She looked at me as those words and the depth of my heart began to penetrate her deceptive facade. Crap! This was serious. What can I do, Steve? Will I do anything? It's okay, we're done. While I was gone, I called Sammy. By the way, she knows too. She'll be here in a few minutes to pick you up. But where will I go? Are you kicking me out? She looked at me when she began to go into shock. You can go wherever you want, you damn cheater, even back to the hospital to see your boyfriend. I don't care. The main thing is that you fuck off. We're done. I finished my drink and placed the glass on the table with a thump to emphasize the end of the conversation. Claire sat looking at me, stunned, when there was a knock on the door. I stood up, walked over, and said hello to Sammy. How did everything go? She asked as we entered the living room and looked at her sister, who was now sobbing nonstop, her shoulders shaking. Just get her out of here, Sammy. Sorry to be blunt, but if she doesn't leave, I'm afraid of what I'll do to her. As much as I hate what she did, I still care about her. Please hurry up. Thank you for this, Sammy, and I will get back to you soon. 
I poured myself another drink while Sammy bustled around packing Claire's things for the next few days. I listened to my wife sob while watching her sister gather her things and stuff them into a couple of suitcases. It took less than ten minutes to get her out of my house. A longer battle would be to cut her out of my life forever and erase the pain. Retribution will help with this. That was all I had to wait for now, plus another hardcore JD. I looked at the flames of the funeral pyre I had built in the backyard. Everything that belonged to Claire was now on fire. There is no way I would let that bitch come back into my house. Fuck you, bitch! I finished the bottle and threw it into the fire. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.